The IRS has become more and more interested in cryptocurrency transactions and is working on regulations to monitor and watch that even more closely. In this video, we'll talk about what the IRS is doing and how crypto is treated for tax purposes. If you like this video and the content in it, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. All right, so let's talk about cryptocurrency and what the IRS is doing. So first off, the IRS has, the cryptocurrency has gained the attention of the IRS. So much so that when it came to the 2020 tax returns, a new question was added to those returns. In fact, it is the very first question on the tax return. It's at the top of the form 1040 where it says, have you purchased, sold, or had any other transactions dealing with cryptocurrencies? And you have to mark yes or no to that question. So right off the bat, the IRS is looking to see who is involved in cryptocurrency and who is not. And the IRS is also working on sending out notifications and other things to trading and brokerages where cryptocurrencies are traded, trying to gather information of those who are trading cryptocurrencies. So it has been under the radar over the past several years, but it's re becoming more and more uh, apparent and more and more obvious to the IRS that they need to watch that closely and they're taking steps to make that happen. So let's talk about how crypto is taxed and how you can report that appropriately so that you don't run into issues with the IRS in case they come knocking or send you a notice or and otherwise contact you in some sort of way. So first off, let's talk about the exchange of cryptocurrency. So the IRS has defined cryptocurrency as property. And what that means is the tax laws have all been written that when property is exchanged, it is a taxable transaction. So when you purchase crypto, when you take your money, your dollars, and you buy crypto, that's not taxable. That's just investing in crypto. But everything else that happens with crypto after that point is taxable. If you exchange your crypto back for US dollars, obviously that's taxable. You've gone from US dollars to crypto, from crypto back to US dollars. That is a taxable transaction when you go from crypto back to US. You recognize either a gain or a loss depending on how much uh, the fair market value is of when you go from the crypto back to the US dollars. And it's the difference between the fair market value and of the crypto and your basis. So if you bought uh, one coin, one coin of crypto at $1,000, and then that went up to 1,200, and you exchange that back to US dollars, so now you have 1,200 US dollars, then that's a $200 taxable transaction. You pay, pay tax on that. And the tax that's due on that will depend on how long you held that crypto. If you held it for a year or less, then it's taxed as a short-term capital gain. If you held it for longer than a year, then it's taxed as a long-term capital gain. Now let's talk about other exchanges with crypto. So you could exchange one crypto for another crypto, right? So let's say that you own Bitcoin and you wanted to exchange that for Ethereum as an example, that is a taxable transaction because you are exchanging one piece of property for another piece of property. So again, if you bought Bitcoin, if you put $1,000 into Bitcoin and now that has gone up and the fair market value of that to you is 1,200 and you exchange that to Ethereum, now you own $1,200 worth of Ethereum the tax code te treats that as a taxable transaction. Even though you didn't get any US dollars out of the transaction, it is still taxable and you still recognize $200 of gain and pay tax on that $200 of gain, even though you didn't get any cash out of the transaction. It's still an exchange of one piece of property for another piece of property. Now, more and more places are starting to accept crypto as payment for either goods or services. I've heard of people using crypto to buy pizza. Uh, I know of people that have, have exchanged crypto for other people's services. Um, uh, and so we have those transactions that are happening more and more. That is also considered a taxable gain. So let's say 
you wanted to buy somebody's services and those services were, we'll use the same example here, $1,200 for their services, whatever they're, they're providing. So you hire them, they say, okay, I'm gonna charge you $1,200 for this. And you say, oh great, can I pay you in crypto? They say, sure. So you pay them in crypto and that crypto that you paid them, you have a basis in that crypto of a thousand. So you originally bought that crypto for a thousand dollars. Now you trade it, you exchange it, you give it to this person in exchange for their services, that crypto is worth 1200. When you exchange it, you have a $200 taxable gain. Again, even though you didn't receive any cash, you've now exchanged your crypto for services that are worth 1200. Your basis in that crypto was only a thousand. You have a $200 taxable transaction and the person getting paid in crypto also pays tax because they're exchanging their services which is worth 1200 in exchange for property that is worth 1200 so they get taxed on that as well so in that transaction both people are taxed you get taxed on exchanging your crypto because you got services that were worth more than you originally paid for that crypto and the person that received the crypto gets taxed because they now have received property in exchange for providing services. Same thing happens if you were to use your crypto to buy goods. If you were to buy a pizza, then you would recognize a gain on however much basis, the difference between the fair market value of that crypto and the basis, and then the pizza parlor, pizza place, they would rec recognize gain because now they've received payment in exchange for uh, providing you a pizza, providing you a, a good, um, a product there. So you'd have to be very careful. So there, there's a lot of things out there where they say, oh, hey, buy our credit card or a debit card and it will link to your crypto account and, every, and you know, then you can make purchases using the debit card online or wherever else. Every time you use crypto to buy something, it's going to be a taxable transaction. You have to know what the basis you have in that crypto to see if you recognize either a gain or a loss when, when you buy something using crypto. So be careful with that. Um, mining, so mining is a really popular thing in cryptocurrency as well. So it's either mining or it's um, um, you know, like the proof of stake, uh, the staking, mining or staking is, is uh, along the same things. If you receive property, uh, you are taxed on the fair market value of that property. So, you know, let's use Bitcoin as an example. So, you know, let's say Bitcoin is worth $30,000 at, at, at the time and you receive one Bitcoin. Maybe, maybe your mining efforts has generated one Bitcoin for you. That's $30,000 of taxable income you receive. Again, you received no US dollars in the transaction, but you received property that had a value, that had a worth. And so you recognize that as taxable income on your tax return, because that is a taxable transaction. Uh, hard forks can be taxable. So a hard fork is when a, um, a cryptocurrency's blockchain splits and you are granted new coins on that blockchain. So you're taxed on the fair market value of the coins that you receive. If you don't actually receive any coins or don't actually receive any property in the hard fork, then you're not taxed on that. You're taxed on anything that any property that you receive as a result of that hard fork. And you would look at the fair market value of the property that you receive, and that's what you would pick up on your tax return as taxable income. There is um, a special provision in the tax code for, for, charity, for charity. So the tax code allows you to donate um, capital property, um, capital gain property, to a qualified charity and get a charitable deduction, a charitable donation for doing that. This applies to um, property that's held for longer than a year. So if you have any crypto that you've held for longer than a year, and your charity, you're charitable inclined, you, you wanna to give to a charity, you wanna to give to something, you find a qualified charity, somebody the IRS recognizes as a qualified charity, you can give them that crypto as a charitable donation. In that instance, you are not taxed on the gain that's sitting in that crypto, and you get to deduct the full fair market value of that crypto. So let's say, Let's, let's go back to a Bitcoin example, right? So let's say you bought one Bitcoin at $20,000. So your basis in that Bitcoin is 20 and you've held it for over a year and now that Bitcoin has gone up to $30,000. So you take that uh, Bitcoin that you bought for 20, you donate it to a charity 
they receive Bitcoin that's worth $30,000 on your tax return. You don't have to recognize the difference between the 20 and the 30. You're not taxed on that. However, you get to deduct the full $30,000 as a charitable donation. It's a, it's a great benefit and it only applies to charities. So if you have, if you've been sitting on some crypto for a year, over a year, and you want to donate that, uh, that's a great way to get a deduction on your tax return without having to pick up uh, income from that, uh, that cryptocurrency that you've been holding. So that covers um, taxes and the IRS and how, how that all applies to cryptocurrencies. Uh, again, if you found this beneficial, helpful, please hit that subscribe button below and uh, we'll come back with some future updates.